We're driving around today testing compatibility across various public charge points around town. And I thought it was a really good opportunity to show you the, I guess, final production spec of our electric vehicle conversion system for series Land Rovers. So you might have seen our earlier system, uh, which was good, but it was very much a, a working prototype proof of concept. This is our true uh, final production system. A few little mods to make for the, for the next models coming up, but overall it's our standard system. So 52 kilowatt hour battery pack made of 10 Tesla modules. That's six in the front under this main pack. Uh, all the electronics, all the control up in here in this main junction box. DC DC converter here where it can get some airflow uh, for an alternator. It's kind of got a fairly premium position, but the packaging works, works really well. You can see the uh, AC cables coming out of the motor controller down to the motor below. All the controls, all the relays, all the systems are integrated into this top box. Around the side here you can see the connections for the 12 volt systems, uh, 35 pin uh, Deutsch plugs. This is the BMS that runs around the car. So this is the CAN bus and control for all the battery pack and a manual service disconnect fuse. So pull this fuse, the entire system is disabled, the battery systems are turned off, all contactors are open uh, and the system is really safe. So OEM level equipment and in a package that can be bolted into a series Land Rover in approximately 15 minutes and then about five cables to plug in. We upgrade the, the braking system, we upgrade the clutch, we upgrade the master cylinders on all of those, the slave cylinders, all new brake lines, an entire new 12 volt system, battery in its original position, a, a deep cycle battery to run accessories and handle like a, a high drawer if required. Um, but completely reworked uh, and rebuilt transmission, new adapter plate from the motor into the original transmission. We're charging at the moment, so a type two charge point with a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger under the driver's seat down under there, uh, meaning that we can charge the 52 kilowatt hour pack uh, with this single phase charge system overnight, 10 hours. Uh, options to install a three phase system, essentially three of those, and give you uh, sort of two to three hour from zero to 100% charging. So six of those Tesla modules in the back, in the front, sorry, and two under each side. We've got the main uh, bash guards removed at the moment. Usually we have a rock mud shield running all across here, but um, just as we've been configuring it, you can see quick connections to the Tesla modules in the side, all running through FlexiCon conduit on anything that's exposed, meaning uh, you basically have to take an angle grinder to that to, to get into it. So all fully weather sealed, but also again, uh, very, very easily installed, very easily replaced, very easily uh, worked on. We can drop a, bat a side battery pack again in about 10 minutes. This vehicle was started its life as a single cab uh, mustard or Bahama Gold as Land Rover called it, uh, single cab ute. We took the rollover protection system from an Australian military parenti, converted it, adapted it for the, the Series 3, built all the bracketry, galvanised all the steel pieces, all of that kind of stuff, uh, and put four seats in the back. Land Rover would have once called these, uh, each of these a two-seater, but uh, for safety's, uh, modern safety's sake, we call them a single-seater. So four people in the back, lots of, uh, lots of padding so that we can um, have that engineered and compliant, and not just that, but actually safe um, to travel in. Three seats in the front, of course, completely remachined dashboard. Uh, we, we restore the original center panel, uh, but replace all the switch gear, redesigned, rebuilt gauges, uh, our design with Speed Hut in the States doing them. So all digital systems, digital speed sensing, all of that. A whole new module below that houses all the electric vehicle controls, so the different drive modes uh, being sort of an off-road, a standard and a highway or almost a sport. Really configuring the throttle response and also configuring the, uh, the regen braking rate and a few other systems. You can also see camp mode there, the little tent, uh, and that allows you, if the key's not in, to press that switch, it'll turn the main battery system on and all the management and monitoring that goes with that 
but feed that into the 12 volt circuits that are around the car. So, you know, we've got USB chargers up in here in the dash and plenty in the back. So you can run your fridge for a month, charge your phone 4,000 times, all of that. That all sits within our completely remachined dashboard. So rebuilt, remachined. This, this was often a, a shelf at, um, and had uh, system, you know, sort of open space here and on the driver's side. We're fitting, fitting a lot of electronics in those, both those areas, so we need to cover that up. But we also wanted to install a stereo, so marine rated stereo gear from Fusion. Um, really simple system, Bluetooth, um, all of that kind of stuff, but uh, along with the four inch speakers here and a subwoofer under the center seat, it's it's quite a nice sound system and obviously sounds great when uh, you're sitting here at, I guess, idle from an EV point of view where there's no sound or very slow speed, particularly off-road. Electric power steering behind the original steering column, uh, adjustable sensitivity so you can sort of set that how you like it. A throttle pedal from a late model Defender which gives us our sort of dual circuit throttle, digital sort of throttle signal. Uh, back into the motor controller, uh, like I said, upgraded brakes, upgraded clutch, but all through the original clutch uh, and brake towers. Uh, original handbrake lever, but connected to a disc brake on the back of the original transmission. The gearbox is the same, but completely rebuilt, uh, including the transfer case. So, and with a slick shift uh, shift pattern on it, so or shifter on it, so a much shorter throw. Uh, than, than standard and a lot easier to shift. It really means with the electric motor too that you can drive in third gear kind of all the time unless you're on a on a sort of be above about 80 kilometers an hour. Uh, often if you're just cruising around you just you just sit in third for forever unless you occasionally need reverse. Um, all new all new doors, uh, all new locking mechanisms, anti-burst locks, all of that kind of thing. Uh, brand new tires, all new brake system, brakes, custom grill uh, by us, a radiator and cooling system developed in conjunction with PWR so we can cool this system, the electric vehicle system almost silently with a water pump that's running through the motor controller and through the batteries. The batteries themselves really don't need in the amount of energy we're pulling through in a system like this, uh, they don't necessarily need cooling because they're not uh, getting fast charge, they're not running a you know Tesla ludicrous mode, but they do want cooling uh, or, or temperature regulation, let's say, is to make sure all the cells and all the modules that contain those cells are all at the same temperature uh, so they have a similar discharge rate. Um, you can see, you can manage the whole system and see a lot more of the functionality on this screen down to the individual cell voltages and see our charge rate that's going in right now. A key to enter the setup mode so that you can't inadvertently uh, adjust uh, any of the crucial settings of the the system. Uh, inside the cab we have the you know main main gauges that you need. So warning lights for anything major, a traditional sort of fuel gauge or battery gauge so that you're not distracted by a lot of this EV stuff. The point of being in these cars is to look out the window and uh, not worry about whether you know you're you're within a thousandth of a volt of of another cell or anything like that. Um, original window wiper, washer, fluid, the, a demister heater that's plumbed in. These Series Twos in particular didn't really have any of that, or had something mounted on the, the dash in a bit of the bit of the way. Um, LED lighting all around. Uh, Headlights by Nava, which is what they use on the Kenworth trucks with integrated DRLs, stainless steel backing cones, all of that. Uh, Bearmark LED uh, turns and park lights uh, built in uh, into the wiring loom as we com completely replace all the wiring with motorsport grade uh, componentry, including the wiring. So it's all Raychem uh, double insulated wire, but provision for spotlights and light bars and everything already built into the system. So if we want to, if you want to add spotlights or anything up the front, it's all there and all integrated into the into the system. A few little refinements uh, to come on this uh, with the design and the, the positioning of a few of the ports. Uh, making install a little bit easier, making maintenance a little bit easier and access to a couple of the user serviceable areas so you're not having to deal with 35 uh, bolts um, in the final production versions but otherwise this is this is pretty much it.